Do you ever wonder, how am I supposed to know if this is my intuition talking to me? I hear this question all of the time, and I've got a solid answer. Look at what you just did. Questioning is the first thing you learn to do in the face of something new. That's not surprising, is it? We've been trained to question every single one of our experiences, from what we will eat, to what we will do, to why we are alive. And we even learn to prepare reasonable justification for all of our experiences in the home, in the school, in the workplace. Think about it. Long before we even experienced, long before we were even experienced enough to know ourselves, understand ourselves, and have a clear sense of our own essential nature, our nature such as, I feel this, I like this, I need this, I want this, I can, I don't want, I don't need, I am, I am not, and so on. Before we had a clear sense of our own nature, we had the big people heavily influencing our perception of ourselves right there in the first place. We depended on their beliefs, their environment, their desires, their feelings. We learned to identify with ourselves through their consciousness. And anything that might have originated as ours, that they did not feel or believe or want as theirs, was subject to questioning before more decisions would be made. The act of repeatedly questioning is the behavior that eventually depletes our experience of self-esteem in the first place. So today, here we are, living our lives built up from that pre-existing foundation of doubt your feelings, doubt your desires, doubt your beliefs, doubt your validity. And it has shaped us into becoming more considerate thoughtful, and perceptive of how our own individual lives fit right here into the whole. This whole domestication, socialization, and organization, law and order, life. So, no wonder you feel the way you do. Maybe all the emotions that initially come up when you suddenly know something are making it hard for you to trust yourself in the first place. Maybe the more you try to figure out your own emotional reaction to your own intuition is what is keeping you from ever following through with making the best decision because you keep settling for another good decision. So of course you have no lived experience and therefore no evidence that you should trust your <laughs> silly idea. What if it turns out really bad? You're responsible. Oh no. 
here you are, stirring the pot with a curiosity that your intuition has something better to provide. Hmm, I understand. You know, I've got really good at saying, whoa, oh my bad. What was I thinking? I mean, that's just it. Clearly, I wasn't thinking. And now that I am, wow, forget that even happened. Yeah, let's just look past all this self-sabotage and get back to the same old, same old. When you remember to consider that all of your values are simultaneously being affected by each of your decisions, you will notice that when it comes to any decision that may set off the relationship alert signal, whether consciously or unconsciously, you won't necessarily feel all light and happy and free even if making the decision is for the best. Sometimes we don't even comprehend the full scope or extent of consequences involved in the aftermath of having simply decided to stop and smell the roses along the way. <clears throat> Yet I digress. I'd like to offer you a solid answer. To the question, how can we feel more confident in our natural capability to be intuitive? How can we better trust ourselves to make wise and effective decisions by relying on our intuitive insights and sensations? I tell you, do something that you absolutely love to do. Something that really puts you in your own state of mind. Something that makes you feel good, excited, happy. For some people that's riding a bike, dancing, a walk in nature. For others that's having a long heart-to-heart -heart with a close relative or friend. Some people really enjoy writing, painting, playing an instrument. And some people just really need a long nap. And there are no limits to what you can do, to whatever it is, as long as it brings your heart and your mind into this synergistic bond all at the same time. What would make you feel really good? Why not take a bath? Really play, play, play with your kids. Read a book. Sing. Go out on a date. When our body, mind, and heart are all simultaneously invested in an experience, we can think of this as being in love. Sometimes for me, especially, that means singing along to my favorite super moody industrial rock songs and letting myself feel all of my feelings because it's not about what we do, but how we are when we are being ourself. Usually in that state, in our own state, our intuition doesn't have to compete for our attention. In fact, we are often making a lot of micro decisions that are all heavily intuitive without even realizing it. That's how we are, we humans. So the next time you're doing something that really turns you on or brings you into the state of being that feels really true to what your heart needs and loves, try this. 
while you are having a good time, bring one of your concerns, something that you haven't been able to make your mind up on, to your awareness. And bringing it up in your awareness, don't try to figure it out. Just let it be included. Just let the you that is in a you state of mind be the one to see it, speak to it, acknowledge this concern, and ask yourself for advice. Let yourself say what the truth is and leave it at that. Intuition travels on love. And so do you. And so do you.